Welcome to the Bumblecast. I'm your host, Ian Flynn, the Bumble King, and joining me as always is my Bumble co-host, Kyle, GCRB Kraus. Oh man, it's an exciting day because uh, we have a special guest back with us, returning guest who's been on many times. It's always a delight to hear from her. Absolutely. Please welcome back to the Bumblecast, Mighty Ray. Hello. Back again, somehow, some way. It just happens. <laughs> 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 do you know how do you know how you get here i don't know how do you get here i get here for the power of for some reason i am compelled to give you money <laughs> i like that power i wish everyone had that power it's a good power to have you should all be telepathy compelled. forget about it flight forget about it supporting the bumblecast the greatest superpower of all it's very true love friendship no nah. monetary gain for us there we go <laughs> There's your Christmas spirit. Yay, capitalism. <laughs> so thank you again for supporting the show and joining us. How have you been? I've been doing okay. Had a bit of hiccups here and there, but I'm plodding along. Do you mean Just plodding do you, along. Do you mean literal hiccups or like, you know, did you actually uh, get no, a bad case of the hiccups? No, no. I'm, okay, good. No, I wish it was a bad case of the hiccups. No, it's just, of course, everyone's favorite internet drama llama nonsense. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yep. I would say that, you know, at the very least, you can just close the computer and walk away. But I yeah. don't know that. It's in your head. Yeah. You're walking away thinking it's still there. It's going to be there when I get back. And it's living rent free yeah. in my head. <laughs> yeah, I can relate to that. The autism is a double-edged sword. When it hyperfixates <laughs> on something you don't want, it takes literally months to get rid of it. And it's like, we've been through this. Why are we still bringing this back up? Please stop. But the thing happened. Yes, it did. Please stop. <sighs> is Do you have a particular way of working around that? Some internal coaching um, dialogue you use to say, stop it, drop it? We're done? No, because my brain does not work the way it should. Like, I literally have to rant away from other people and reflect and continue the process till finally it's in the back of my mind and put in a box that nonsense that's happened to me again. Just put it in there. It's just, I don't know why you can't just go, no, but it happens. It's a I tedious a thing, but, but it happens. It's a kind of a process. I mean, you've got the mental image of the box. You know how to get things in the box eventually. It might be wrestling a tiger, but by goodness, you get that tiger in the box. Mm. Maybe just don't bottle, right. Maybe just don't put all your feelings in little boxes and put them away, because that could be dangerous later on when yeah. you have a whole stack yeah. full of boxes and they start crushing you. That's not good. I'm, I'm straining this metaphor. I can't afford things, so... We just have to do the old-fashioned Australian way, which is uh, suck it up and deal with it. <laughs> <laughs> She'll be right. Keep going. Oh, no, she's broken down. What happened? Oh, it's a meltdown. Oh, no, that's not a meltdown. That's a... Ooh, oh, uh, mm. The boxes fell yeah, over. Yeah, we're just... Yes. The boxes are leaking eldritch horror. <laughs> oh, oh, no. That's not good. That's so, it. Love cracking... Love cracking... Mm. Yeah, never mind. I can't can't say the joke. (laughs) If there's one decent thing I'm kind of good at, it's for some reason, it's the brain these days is like, it's like the edgy phase from my teen years, but it's matured into something weirder. I don't know. (laughs) (laughs) We We no longer say slurs, but instead we just create the nightmare fuel. So anyway, uh, moving on from that. I have played a teeny bit of Sonic Frontiers. It is a massive time sink, and I had to stop. Because if I <laughs> kept going, uh, I wouldn't have got anything done. Mm-hmm. mm-hmm. So I I've... certainly didn't spend all night, two nights in a row, blasting through it and throwing off my sleep schedule. No! Why do you ask? <laughs> uh, <laughs> I can't do that. I didn't spend... My tw- body would be extremely pissed. I didn't spend 25 hours uh, almost 100%ing the whole thing. No, not at all. <laughs> 25 hours. Did I say 25? Yeah. Yeah, my save file says 25. 
good on you showing restraint and you know being a proper adult <laughs> i kind of have to otherwise the body gets extremely mad mm. like i cannot literally function if i don't get recommended hours of sleep it's, it immediately goes you stayed up till dumb times in the mo morning now you will not be able to concentrate and do anything and you'll be irritable for three days mm -hmm. deal mm -hmm. with it i, I more I can't function even uh, when I do get the recommended amount of hours of sleep. <laughs> it's kind of, it's kind of, uh, it's exhausting, literally. <laughs> I will say, um, from what little I've played, it is very fun outside of the camera being weird. It doesn't want to cooperate when I play a Asura, so I've got to have to take your tips in mind. I've liked the dialogue. <laughs> Listening to Amy talk kind of reminds me of an NPC from Spyro 3. <laughs> I don't, don't know if that's a good <laughs> thing or a bad thing, but it gives me that kind of vibe. So I've been grinding away. The little challenges have been pretty fun. Um, I have not been able to S-rank any of the levels in, <laughs> on the first island. There, It's all D, C, and maybe a couple of Bs. Like, I keep getting... The lowest rank. It's like, uh... hey, you're finishing yeah, the level. Like that's all that matters. Hmm? Mm. Yeah, I haven't gotten too many high ranks either. It's like, okay, I, I found the red star rings mostly. I got a couple keys, maybe. That's good. That's good. <laughs> hey, big. How about I cash in for some keys? Yeah. Well, like I said, yeah, I. Yeah, that's what I've been doing. Like I said, I hundred percented the whole dang thing, so I got S rank on all of it, and I'm just like, okay, I'm good. I'm, 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 I'm satisfied. <laughs> So, apparently, one dash two on the first island is notorious for being the most difficult. I saw somebody clock in a time where they were one one hundredth of a second over for the S rank. Mm -hmm. Yeah, big oof. <laughs> I'd be so salty if that happened. I, I actually, I think they nearly did. I think that nearly did happen on a Crash Bandicoot run I was doing for um one of the, trying to get a gold relic on the air yeah one of the airplane levels. Mm -hmm. Oh, I haven't touched Crash Four because of that. it's like you should play Crash Four it'll be fun and there's that part of me that's like do you really want to rip all your hair out? <laughs> <laughs> no. 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 Is Crash 4 as hard as the uh, other three? Uh, from what I heard, as a casual playthrough, no. But if you're going for 100%, it's basically just grabbing you by the legs and smashing up and down like Hulk smashes Loki. <laughs> <laughs> mm. <laughs> Good to know. So, wait, 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 yeah, wait, wait, wait. if you're going for any percent, like 100 or 100, 106, you're in for a world of pain. <laughs> world of pain. <laughs> Was, Luckily uh, for me, or... was... I have never 100% completed a single Crash Bandicoot game, so it's kind of... <laughs> <laughs> were, were Crash 1 through 3 particularly difficult? I don't remember it being like insanely yes. difficult. Yeah, Crash 1 is... A 1 is kind of <laughs> janky, though, because they, um, they, they hadn't the old... refined it quite yet. So Yeah, 1's, one's hard... Because in the remake, they gave the pill physics from Crash 3 to Crash 1 and 2 for consistency, and it's just... Yeah, the, I heard pain. that. It was bad. I was this close to getting the red gem, and then my mom walked in while I was playing, and it just threw me right off, and I'm going, I was so close to getting that gem, and I could have... Uh, no. Pain. It happens a fair bit. Like, you're just this close to getting something, and then someone comes in and is like, Hi! I need your help! Or walks in talking on the phone, and it's just like, And there goes all your momentum. <laughs> all yeah. gone. Threw off my groove. Mm, that's why I like Spyro more, because despite a couple of really tedious mini games, it's not pain. You can <laughs> relax with Spyro. I can 100% complete Spyro. I can't 100% percent complete crash because crash crash is pain and spyro is chill yeah yeah this, for some reason i'm getting like there's some spyro vibes from sonic frontiers you know <laughs> big yeah. open space you kind of just run around in uh, so 
self-indulgent part of me, I keep thinking of um, Sonic Frontiers as like, Mighty just going absolutely ham on the islands. Like, look at this, look at this. And meanwhile, Ray's gunning down one of the harder bosses and just getting yeeted across the island into the water and then swims back, limping along the way, gets back up, grabs his weapon of choice, drags it slowly towards the boss to try and do it again. And and basically repeats the meaning, the definition of insanity over and over and over <laughs> again till he finally, finally conquers that one boss and then sees another boss and he's like, let's do this. <laughs> it repeats the same thing over and over again. Meanwhile, Mighty's in every nook and cranny going, oh, look, there's little rock people. Oh, my gosh, there's a key in this dirt. Ray, Ray, look, I found a key. Oh, Oh well, he's he's gone. <laughs> well, He'll come back. If, if it gives you any peace of mind, the hundred percent frontiers, all you have to do is clear all the map tiles. You don't have to get all the collectibles. You don't even have to watch all the cutscenes. Like you can skip all the character interactions that aren't mandatory, which is a little surprising. You don't even have to get S ranks. You don't even have to do all the challenge stages. It's just clear the map, and it says, "Yeah, hundred percent, you're done. You're good." Well, it's map uh, clear. Like 100%. Getting all those little little nooks and crannies and everything, I can't help myself. <laughs> yeah, still yeah. probably be stuck on the first island for weeks. <laughs> the uh, <laughs> digging for everything. That's just if you want to go for achievements, then that's when you have to actually start. Yeah, I don't care about those stuff. silly little trophies. But if they don't lock, if they don't unlock anything in the game. I don't care. <laughs> <laughs> but the game itself, 100%, is just the map. So just opening the maps. Now, the mm. only hidden, only like hidden thing is you need to finish the last regular boss on hard mode. Yep. To get I've played the whole thing on hard mode. I, didn't I see haven't had too much itself. trouble. Yeah. No, I didn't have too much trouble either. Um, But it was... The, the final boss is a, a bit of a challenge. It's kind of frustrating. There's no choice. kind of frustrating. There's no checkpoints, you know. <laughs> yeah, but I guess that's kind of but the point. Yeah, it's like an it's old. Even it's, the context of it, it's old school shooter mentality. I get it, but still, you know, it's kind of like, oh man. So just have to remember the patterns. It's good old pattern memorization. Haven't had that in a while in a Sonic game. <laughs> Actually, we have, See? but you know. <laughs> it's genius. It's it's a callback to the retro roots. It's a celebration of the history of gaming. And sure, okay, <laughs> sure. <laughs> All right. I mean, I'm glad you're enjoying your time with it, though, and I hope you have more time with it in the near future. I hope so too. It'll be good. Yeah. Uh, and other news, I have something for you both. I don't know if you saw this, Mister Flynn. This is original art, not um. Sonic fan characters do not steal winky face copyright trademark. So <laughs> this is this is Holly's Wacky World original branded um shenanigans. So you don't have to worry about me going, Hey, you can't steal this because this is a gift to you and Kyle. Kyle's already seen these little guys. Yes, I have. They're adorable. So, Let me click you this link, y'all. Yeah, this will take this is my DeviantArt page. So I got Tons there we of go. That one notes. shows up. Yeah, for some reason, DeviantArt is very fic fickle with the embedding. Yes, I don't know why. I don't know why. Yes. So I have to <laughs> copy the link, then copy the image, and then do the same, so that way it's not just reposting the image, because I'm fussy on that. I don't like when people do that, because it's like, where is the link? Where's the source? Why do you people not source your images? I want to give credit to the original stuff uh, people in the comments going oh divino eclipse is bad i'm like eh, I've, I've i've seen i've seen worse honestly eclipse is <laughs> all right um... i i yeah it's not it's finicky i wish they had got rid of like the birthday reminders and um had just drop and drag i don't know why they got rid of that but uh, if my autistic ass can adapt to it then it <laughs> can't be too bad because it's like I remember my auntie giving me a GPS and going, you know how to use a GPS? I'm like, no. Oh, you just, just press the buttons. <laughs> no. It's 
like one of them dang no, darn video games you play sh- all the time. <laughs> yeah, you literally have to guide me through it, and even then, sometimes the brain's going, what? What the hell are you talking about? What does this mean? Just, just speak <laughs> like I'm five at the moment, because my brain is not processing anything. So anyway, so these are the... Uh, these are false slugs, they're not true slugs. So the bumble slugs are uh, they're part of a thing called uh, part of my greater slug universe because my brain has become fixated on slugs. I blame cool. the pink the pink slugs from that are actually real that live in a specific part of New South Wales, Australia. During the bushfires everyone was worried that they were extinct, but they survived by getting into every little nook and cranny they could. So they're still around, thank goodness. Oh, good. And I thought to myself, why not make my own version? So they are very big. They're, they're cephalopods because slugs and snails and all that are related to octopuses and squids and all that, I think. I could be wrong. The, bi- the, the biologists will correct me eventually. And um, <laughs> they're false, false slugs are big, they can reach about a foot long, and they weigh Whoa. about one to two kilos, and they are, they tend to amass in groups. So if you find one, there's chances are you'll find lots of them. <laughs> They're mainly herbivores. They eat any leafy greens. Don't don't let them eat tomatoes, though, because they react badly with their um, acid pouches in their cheeks. That's how they defend themselves. They sit up, puff themselves up, screech like they're in a screamo band, and then if you keep trying to agitate them, they then spit acid at you. So have fun with that. Okay, now I'm convinced this is an Australian animal, because where else are you going to find a non-slug that weighs as much as your shoe, is about the same size as your shoe, screams and spits acid and can outrun fire? What in the world is going on in that country? (laughs) No, this is made up. This is 100% Holly's Wacky World Susware Incorporated made up stuff. I'm sure they are real. You're just being there. nice. No, there's some Australian no. slug out there that screams and spits acid. I'm sure of it. <laughs> no, this is just me making up stuff. I'm very good at making up stuff well, on the I'm fly. <laughs> so, yeah, these little fellas are unique. They come in 50 bazillion different morphs. Um, some folks may have seen, quote-unquote, Slug Marcus. He's a more common one, and he's a Grumpy Guts. Oh, of course, yeah. So From Slugs of War. Um, yeah, Slugs of War. <laughs> so Slug Flynn is a lot more chill. He ha- though he has a unique ability, so he's got two unique abilities. His tail glows in the dark, so you can see him when he's running around at night. And uh, if he's agitated, his beard will go from, like, brown to bright orange. And that indicates that he's about to shoot fire. (laughs) He doesn't spit acid. He breathes fire, because I got the idea from Jams. Sorry, Jams. (laughs) I'll take that. I will be a fire breather. That works for me. Fire. Yeah. (laughs) He also steals books, raids your bookshelf, and builds, like, a nest thing and hides in there. It's very happy. Slug Kyle, on the other hand, he cannot breathe spit acid because the worms that live in his antennas have basically kind of rendered that mute. Instead, he'll bob them together enough to shoot electricity. So, awesome! Don't pick him up, or you get a, or you get the Pikachu treatment. <laughs> Roll zappy zap. I'm into the zappy zap. Mm. <laughs> the best is. thing about false slugs is that you can keep them as pets. So they are for experienced pet keepers only because of the acid. Well, I'd hope so. <laughs> or the fire or yeah. the lightning. Yeah, ah, you, eh. you, they um they're they're pretty intelligent little things. They're like, you know, the Disney critters. They know what's up. Okay, good. <laughs> you feed them every day, you, you put them away in their little cage kennel thing at night, and um you let them out during the day. The best thing is you don't have to worry about if you pick them up, you don't have to worry about getting slime all over you because they can't secrete slime. So they, how they stick to walls and ceilings is, is that they're like Velcro, like the geckos. they got like little Velcro strips and they crawl everywhere. They're I mean, also cheeky little things. So if they steal something of yours, they'll run up the wall and the ceiling and look at you like, I have the thing now. You're going to, you can't grab me. 
We're getting a suggestion from the chat that says, I fear what John Gray would be. <laughs> oh, no. The John Gray false slug. Hmm. <laughs> I don't know. It'd probably be bright colored, I'd imagine. <laughs> it would definitely scream. I can give you that for free. <laughs> 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 and whatever he stole from you, he would promptly lose in the most unlikeliest of places. <laughs> like that time we were all out and we just went to the grocery store to grab some snacks after the show. And we got back to the car and where is his shadow hat? Where is his shadow beanie? John, how did you lose the shadow beanie you were wearing on your head? We go back into the store and for some reason it's in the frozen foods counter. <laughs> <laughs> that sounds like John. That That is John to a T. <laughs> He got distracted, I guess. John? Distracted? No. State of being. <laughs> we tease because we love. And because yeah. it's true. You know it is, John. <laughs> uh, we will link these uh, lovely pieces of art that Holly has shared with us in the uh, in the description on the episode. So go ahead and check them out if you uh, are so inclined. Or, you know... I think you also have them on uh, a thumbnail for this episode too so that will be yep we'll did see a them thumbnail there. For them. now is this something you just do as a personal project or do you do custom ones that you like oh, what is the term you know how artists will create like custom animals dragons no, i don't i don't do closed species um kind of okay. to, to me personally kind of defeats the purpose because if i make an oc it's mine. Yeah. I don't mind buying, like, Sonic fan characters and that from other people, because I've done that in the past plenty of times. I've bought, like, tons of them that I haven't been able to use. I'm very sorry to all the people I've bought from. I, I, I love your designs, and I did buy them out of genuine plans, but unfortunately, again, the autism is a double-edged sword, and then all the ideas you hyperfixate on one day suddenly go out the window for something else the next day. So then you go back and go, oh, look, all these characters I had. And then you quickly draw them and then you get super burned out and then you move on to the next thing. So, yeah, I have a, I have a lot of or actual original characters. I've had to migrate them from my Divina to uh, my Toy House. Uh, shout out to John the Real Waluigi for being very kind enough to give me a toy house code thing so I can get in and move all my OCs there because I didn't really want the DA AI magic machine thing to use them in its uh, make the art thing happen because you know mm -hmm, mm -hmm. they're my babies even though I don't use them I don't want it to be used in you know bogus nonsense right not I'm not against AI art in principle because artists can grow and adapt i just don't like the fact that it yanks other people's art without giving them the option to opt out and people are like oh it's no big deal you just should have claimed it in the first place it's like bruh the person you're lecturing uh that's the the caretaker and the original artist has passed away and mm -hmm. kind of makes you look like a very malicious little vulture person <laughs> like that shouldn't Think. fall upon the artist to hunt down every single possible permutation of theft. That's the whole thing about yeah. theft. You don't know you've been thieved. I saw somebody's take on it saying that AI assistant to art as a tool could be, you know, used legitimately. And like, if you're using a particular setting, that's only going to show up once in your project. Like their, their instance was like a diner or a kitchen, I think. Instead of combing through 500 different Google images, hoping to get the right angle, you plug in the idea to the AI thing and say, you know, a diner from this angle with this machinery present. And it turns out something basic enough, close enough that you can work from. And then you build on that and you create your own art off of that using that yeah. reference. References is fine. It's when you plug in the string of, you know, do it in this style of this artist to produce this character doing whatever. And it's just wholesale grabbing and stitching together. Yeah, it's, it's basically um, the bootleg toys you see at the El Cheapo shops, but more yeah. um, getting more sophisticated than that. And it's, 
and pe- people are like, yes, we can cut the middleman out. And it's just, there's a part of you going, oh, so we're just going to make art more and more like a big gray brownie blob. Like, yeah. I, that was a thing that bummed me out during the sixth generation where everyone glommed on to third person shooters and all that and everything <laughs> was gray brown and all that jazz and it put yep. me right off because i was you know, i grew up on 3d platformers and bright colorful games and variety in that and you know it was bad when even big tent pole games like resi evil and silent hill and other games that didn't quite fit the niche were all being shoved into we need you to be edgy and for the longest time i had a kind of a grudge against gears of war because of it <laughs> then, uh, <laughs> then the brain worms when i went to tape said hey use gears of war to create what you want do it that's right went, okay whatever man <laughs> ah oh, the dark and edgy era Everything's yeah, gray. It was, yeah. It's there was grim, realistic. <laughs> there were still, no. there, luckily, there were still plenty of colorful, fun games at that time. They were just, you know, all less visible. RPGs. You know? Yeah. I found most of them were all RPGs with either stilted voice acting or <laughs> like elements that didn't appeal to teen me. Like, oh, this is set in a fantasy world. Where's the sci fi? Oh, this kind of... Oh, wait, the voice acting is terrible. I can't stand <laughs> that stuff. Uh, uh. Now I'm I'm 30, and it's more... Oh, this is an interesting enemy game. Uh, oh, well, that's an obnoxious panty shot. Was that really necessary? <laughs> oh, apparently it was, because now we're getting a titty shot on top of that. Like, guys, 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 I'm not opposed to horny. You just got to do it with a bit of finesse, okay? <laughs> no, we're not going to do that. We're not even going to go full ham. We're going only halfway. And what? now you're involving lolly stuff. Ew, gross. No, nope. in nah, the bin. Nah, Put nah, her nah. in the bin. Get that in the bin. Get that in the bin. Nothing worse than going through horny stuff and then it's just all gross nonsense and it's like... <sighs> right, <laughs> all of it want. in the bin. Chuck it in the bin. No, None of you people are allowed to be horny for like another several years you need to go back to class go on go back to art school go learn some brains go on go 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 get in the bin (laughs) go to jail for ten thousand years (laughs) yeah something like that anyway look out that dog has a bat (laughs) bonk Bonk. yeah (laughs) i'm i'm very fussy about what i i like I think if we I all like are. it, I will say I will say it. I'll make sure to say, "Oh, that's nice. I like that. I like this." And if I don't like it, I'll just go, "Yeah, okay. I'm just going to move on." I just I wish more people could do that, you know. It's it's hard. It's just, but... I'm, I'm like I have a whinge to myself about it, but I'm not going to be like getting in people's business about their pictures cuz when you curate stuff on in DeviantArt clubs and stuff, you get exposed to it lot of stuff some of it's like oh wow this person can draw circles around me every day and it's like i'm not even mad <laughs> and then there are some that that you look at and you go okay that is a thing and then there's the art theft stuff that's where you you, you see someone who can draw it may not be oh my god so amazing here my money but it, you know it's a picture you can make out the character in that and then they immediately go to I'm going to poorly edit someone else's art and you're looking at this going, you can draw, just draw. Why are you editing someone else's art? I, I got, I did get upset at someone for doing that because they kept stealing multiple pieces of art from different artists I like. And I'm just going, you call, you call yourself a deity that you're, you believe that your character is the coolest thing since sliced and you can't even give your character the dignity of a decent piece of art that you drew yourself on your own. You have to edit someone else's work. Like, buddy, come on. You can do better than that, man. Come on. Grab that pencil, grab that sheet of paper, and just go ham. Just do it. Like, that's the only <laughs> time I re- 
recently that I've gotten annoyed because he was like, why are you going around telling people that I've been doing this? It's because, like, you didn't get permission. It's simple as that, bro. Now get good. Come on. <laughs> get good, yes. Like, it's a good sentiment. Like, my art uh, uh, isn't great, but I don't go around... You know, editing other people's work mainly because I can't figure out how to make art programs work. <laughs> it's like, how do I do things? Or, you know, trace or whatever. I couldn't trace. Like, it takes me forever to actually ink my own pictures because I keep making mistakes and I have to go and find ways to fix it or sc- redo it again. So, I wouldn't be tracing like official Sonic poses and that because it would take me forever and a day. So, I just have to rely on memory to do the thing. Like, how do I do the thing? Okay, I can do the thing now, so I'll just keep going. And then I burn myself out and I don't draw for like several weeks. <laughs> Sometimes you just got to take a break, though, you know? Yeah. It's... Though I will tell you one thing. Do you guys remember that question I asked you way back in J- July about those really minor Archie characters? The-, the fox and the rabbit? And I was like, do you know any names for these guys? It's like, and and Ian's like, um, uh, the, the, Siggy and Dave. <laughs> well, I've managed to make those names work with the rest of the underground. Because the other underground guys, they were all named after rappers. So I kept the music thing. Okay. So I dubbed the rabbit Ziggy Stardust, a.k.a. Bowie the Rabbit. And the fox is now Dave Matthews, a.k.a. Band <laughs> the Fox. <laughs> that works. That works. Perfect. Very good. Spun that straw nice. into gold. <laughs> Excellent. Man, I, get that, I love that creativity. That's super cool. It's now semi-canon Archie I've... Sonic Wiki. Make it happen. <laughs> <laughs> Don't do that. I'm just thinking I throw random nonsense out there and you're able to do something with it. Like I have no contextual idea of what we're doing here. Uh, names. Okay, here we go. I'm actually going to find a thematic parallel and make everything work. There you go. That's right. Bravo. <laughs> so now I need to figure out what to do about that weird mongoose that popped up in issue 50-something. The, the, the protogen of Mina. Who is she? Where'd she come from? Uh, Where did she why go? Did none, of, none of these bozos give her a name. We had... I know they stuck the... Dirk and whatever his name is from Sat I Am, they snuck them in there. And yet this random mongoose girl pops up and it's like, who's she? We don't know. Like, you finally introduce a leader of a team, female leader of a team of freedom fighters, and then you do nothing with her. It's like, uh... Oh, yeah. Oh. Now I remember what you're talking about. Yeah, that sleepy-eyed non-Mina. <laughs> yeah. It's her estranged cousin, Anima. Tina. Tina, sure. (laughs) There we go. (laughs) Mina and Tina. Here we go. Mina inverse? No. (laughs) That's a different thing. (laughs) I like it. I I do not remember this character like at all. I'm trying to see if I can find anything about her. It's like Sally puts out a call to all the various Freedom Fighter factions after Robotnik's initial defeat in an attempt to coordinate rebuilding a, in a post-Robotnik world. Oh, yeah, and she's warning them about the the pocket zone dimension thing that never went anywhere. <laughs> and amongst the various faces, there is what looks pretty much like Mina Mongoose before she shows up. Huh. And she's got like two lines of dialogue. I don't think they are very defining. And then the entire transmission cuts out abruptly which I think was supposed to be foreboding, foreshadowing of some peril, and I don't know if that went anywhere. It's been a while. Mm. Yeah, it has been a while. A long while. I still keep coming up with weird ideas for all these characters. Now my brain has decided, hey, here's an ultra challenge. See if you can come up with something for Chris Thorndike. I'm like, okay. Uh, he's now a dork. <laughs> oh, so he's now. the same. <laughs> so. No yeah, but this time he's stuck with Ray, and he's oh. like no longer. Oh, Sonic, my number one. I'm your number five fan, or whatever. He's like, oh god, is this what being an adult is like? Do I have to accept responsibilities? 
And Ray's like, violence is violence is the rule of beasts. Chris is like, oh, okay, yeah, I definitely have to now be an adult now. Give me that chair, boy. <laughs> <laughs> like, it ends with, instead of Chris going, no, I can't let you leave, Sonic, it's, it's Ray's basically telling telling all the secret agents, if you want me to stay, I'll stay, and Chris is like, Ray, you're gonna put your universe in danger. He's like, oh, yeah. Opens the gate. All the agents are like, what are you doing? You don't understand the consequences of your actions. And Chris is like, yes, I do. It's called being an adult. Grabs Ray, chucks him in, closes the portal. And it's like, it's, and that is how it's done. And leaves. <laughs> That's right. It's good to see you, Ray. Thanks for, thanks for stopping by. Let, don't let the portal hit you on the way out. Yoink. <laughs> <laughs> I could stay. No, you couldn't. Really. Don't want to trouble you. Head on home, buddy. <laughs> It's it's not it's not like that that bad. Like there are moments where Chris and Ray are like really chummy, but it, it like it's a life and death situation. And Ray's thinking, "Oh, if I stay, then Chris won't get hurt." And Chris is thinking, "If he stays, these idiots will do something horrible to him, and I'm not gonna have that on my conscience. I gotta get you the hell out of here. We got everyone else out. Now I'm getting you out." I'm going to do the right thing. Because I, I think, had had they done that with Chris in Season 2, rather than, oh, oh, no, I feel sad, and have Chris go, everyone else is like, oh, we need Sonic, he's our hero, and Chris goes, yeah, but he has to go home, bro. Like, he's a great guy, but he's got to go home. And lets him go home. I think a lot of people would be very happy with that. It's like, all his character development leads up to this moment, and then the... The poor kid has a breakdown and regresses back to zero. It's like, yeah. Oh, you silly spoiled child. Bonk. That being, that, be, <laughs> <laughs> that being said, it did set up for a really nice finale episode where you know the world is moving on without Sonic. You see what everyone is reacting, how everyone reacts. You know, Amy and Tails going solo, and then out of the blue, here comes Sonic to save the day and everyone's reaction to that that was a fun episode yeah that was a good episode funny the best sonic x episodes are the one with no humans aside from eggman (laughs) (laughs) almost i didn't didn't mind that silly baseball episode like i'm not a huge chris hater i'm more of a yeah he's all right he was there like i've had (laughs) i've watched a lot of cartoons when i was young and there were characters that just made chris look like Oh, you're a nice little guy. I can put up with you. <laughs> like that was some the, really atrocious TV shows for kids that had characters that are just like you could tell that the creators wanted their audience to suffer, but in a you know they couldn't like make the censors go away. They had to abide by the rules and manage to do so in some way. Right? And especially when you go to a school where the 12 year olds around you, some of them are just really badly behaved. It's like, yeah, I will put up with Chris being a baby way more than I will put up with (laughs) these guys. Like reality has a way of making you go, see this whiny rich kid? There are kids out there that make him look like a saint. It's true. Like, I have little regrets buying all the DVDs of Sonic X because they were, like, six to seven dollars. Oh, wow. <laughs> cheap as chips in Australia because no one really cared about Sonic X and they've just kind of half chucked them in the bargain bins. Like, it was more expensive trying to find Sonic Underground DVDs at yeah. the time than Sonic X ones. Oh, I kind of believe but, that. Um, but there was a anime I did regret buying called Steel Angel Kurumi. And I, I was a teenager at the time, and, you know, hot anime girls were my thing. And I'm like, oh, yeah, I had an eye for ages. Holy crap, the main character's voice was horrible. It was irritatingly bad. Just terrible. I couldn't sub? watch. Sub and dub was bad. <laughs> they, the dub was accurate to the sub, and they were both bad. Like, <laughs> and back then, I was firmly in cult. Um, club dub because some of the Japanese voices would affect the sense sensory thing in my ears and I couldn't watch watch it. 
Oof. Nowadays, it's nowhere near as bad for some reason. It's now gravitated towards small crying children. And um, I couldn't listen to her in English. I couldn't listen to her in Japanese. The only good part about Steel Angel Kurumi was the lesbian robot girl who kept getting shafted in the harem. Like, <clears throat> there were all these other girls... And it was set in, like, 1910, 1920s Japan, and it was buck wild. It was based off the manga, and then, it like, the anime went wildly off course. And then there was a sequel manga that just went full Yuri bait. And I didn't mind the main character in that one, because her catchphrase was, Oh, well, this sucks. <laughs> and by the end of the show, spoilers for anyone who cares about Steel Angel Kurumi and has yet to watch it, run now. She goes, Oh, well, this rocks! I think something like that. Because, yeah, uh, if you like Echi, do not buy Steel Angel Kurumi. Please don't. I, I, I just don't. Don't buy it. Just don't. Buy something else. I, I don't know what. Just, it's, n it's, it's, just don't. Just don't. It's just, I just, ugh. The wit. <laughs> You're better off just buying anything else. Buy something else. Like, I don't know. A burger. Like, yeah, burger. You get more value for money with a burger than Steel Angel Kurumi. <laughs> I mean, I always get more value with a burger compared to Hell anything, yeah. really. Burger. <laughs> it doesn't take much to convince me, to be honest. <laughs> me neither. Uh, buy burgers. Another exciting news. I've managed to find Mighty and Ray plushes in my local area. Oh, you posted I never yeah, thought yeah. I'd live to see the day that there would be Mighty and Ray plushes in my local area. That's awesome. Oh. Uh, I'm glad to hear so it. It felt so good. Yep. Yeah, so, I remember when you posted that. That was awesome. <laughs> now all we need is to somehow strong arm Sega into making a Lumina and Void plush, and then... <laughs> I will be on cloud nine for a long time. Just, just. And you know, I'd say don't hold your breath, but we got like a Mephilus skateboard. We've and, gotten all sorts got of weird Murphy stuff. Plush. And like the I got a Murphy thing. plush. Yeah. So like, why not at this point? <laughs> Might as well. <laughs> I mean, Mer Lumina would make a good plush. Yeah. She's got that cuddly dream like quality to her. You could keep her around. Firing off an email to the or you know, tweet to the social media team and say, "Hey, you got all these others. Why not these?" Uh, I, I deleted my Twitter. I don't have it. Well, anymore. can't fault you for that. No, that's probably a smart. I just, uh, you're the, you're I the smartest one in the room. Them. <laughs> yeah, I still have to email them about the hooray for hooray hooray for pancakes idea. <laughs> <laughs> wow. That would be the if they did that. I think it would be the first time they acknowledged the existence of Sh Sonic Shuffle since, uh, oh geez, mm, let's say Ever? December twenty first, <laughs> two thousand. <laughs> 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 yeah, that would be pretty wild though, man. Bring bring out freaking Sonic Shuffle stuff. Why not? <laughs> it's all canon. Everything is canon. Just do it. Yeah. <laughs> I actually had an idea for um the my weird little uh Phoenix Wright project that'll never get off the ground. It's just nonsense, so no one's gonna care. But Caliburn interacts with Marcus and he's <laughs> like Can you stop swearing? No. Gets upset at him one point. Caliburn's telling him basic facts. And if you let him run off a bit too long, Marcus will respond, Yes, mom. It's like, I'm glad you think I'm wise. Eh? Wait a minute, I'm not your mother. And then refuses to cooperate for the next five minutes. <laughs> <laughs> Keeps calling him Sir Phoenix all the time. Sir Phoenix, look, the enemy is approaching. Thank you, talking sword. <laughs> <laughs> well, at least he's a talking sword that doesn't tell you to kill your friends. No. No. <laughs> Caliburn would never do that. No. No. That's only cursed swords. If anything, he'd be the one fantasy making games. you charge forward to get rid of all the locusts. Yeah, oh, yeah. that would be kind of fun. <laughs> Wielding Caliburn on the locusts. Wow. <laughs> be very different. Oh, I was just watching from the background, just going, oh boy, oh boy. 
I guess I gotta heal everybody. <laughs> uh, why are there so many of these things? It's because they're the horde, sweetie. Now, are you gonna come in and join the fray or not? Um, I don't know, but but since you're my master, I guess I have to. Hey, violence! Yay! <laughs> Boy, it's just watching all this happening. He's just like, why did I join Merfilis's side? This is all one giant scam. <laughs> it's more of a scam than Bitcoin. <laughs> yeah. Like, even Eraser the Jin and Molina are like, we backed the wrong horse, and Wayne's like, yeah, we certainly did. We absolutely did. We backed the wrong horse. Yeah, but Mephilus is voiced by Dan Green, so, you know, he's kind of, yeah. he's got, uh, uh, you, you know. I, I, I always <laughs> picture him over. as the ham, the ham to um the Locust Queen straight lady act. He's like, no, 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 let's not do the genocide just yet. I have a plan. And the Queen's like, you always have a plan. Yes, but this time it shall be different. Watch. <laughs> Phoenix just bypassed your plan. Ah, oh, no. <laughs> Damn nerds. I forgot he has nerds. I thought he was too asocial to have nerds on his side. That's the boy. The boy is asocial. He's not. He's the leader of Delta Squad. Well, I'm sorry. I don't know all the mythos to your world. I just brought you here on the behests of another being, so that I can bypass all the time shenanigans and live to see another day. Okay? I'm sorry that I offended you, your highness, your majesty. I'm very sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Uh, I'm good. I'm good. I'm good. I promise. Okay, we will do the genocide soon. I just want to make sure everyone suffers first. Like, <laughs> we have torture chambers for that, you stupid crystalline being. Just kill the phoenix already. We will get to that. Just one second. Just one second. I want to see if they bypass this trap. Oh, curses. The boys turn into a monster and is now bypassing the trap. No, 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 it's not fair. I put all these traps out. Now Infinite's going to give me crap for this. And I'm not going to be upstaged by that edgelord. We're both edgelords. <laughs> Get him out of here. The edgiest of lords. What is being referenced here? My nonsense. <laughs> <laughs> is the Mighty Ray info dumping headcanon power hour? <laughs> That's what it is. <laughs> That's a good name for it. It's either that, it's either that or dead silence, because I'm not good at making small talk <laughs> in group settings. I just sort of sit there. It's like, oh, would you? Do you have anything to say? No. <laughs> <laughs> I like the stream of consciousness thing, though. It's fun. <laughs> I would contribute, but I never played Gears of War. That's it's like okay. The first. Game All you need to know play. is Marcus is a grumpy guts. Mm. Baird is the the nerd. It's, it's like Tails if you grew up and became cynical about everything. Coltrane is the big, softy, loud guy. And Dominic starts off as the happy-go-lucky guy. Horrible traumatic event happens, mm -hmm. and he becomes pessimistic and then decides to sacrifice himself to save the day. Spoilers for Gears Free, I'm very sorry. <laughs> I keep spoiling things unintentionally. Now, you keep saying the nerd, but they're all built like linebackers, aren't they? Uh, they yes, they all are, but... Baird is okay. an actual nerd. He is okay. the uh, he's he's the dude who builds the things and also okay. has the one liners. <laughs> I appreciate that have the beef nerd. Yes. <laughs> he's not a pleasant beef nerd, but oh. he is a nerd. Well, it's Gears of War. I think I mean I got the impression that they're all kind of like grunt shoot, but I, no, I appreciate their more... being three hundred pounds of meat and brain. Yeah. Yeah, Baird would get along well with Tails. And then he'd find out about all of Eggman's robots and be like, these are all property of Damon Baird Industries now. <laughs> you, should have, you should have trademarked and copyrighted these things before I got my mitts on them. Like, he literally asked Eggman, like, bro, you could be making billions of dollars off these things. Why are you antagonizing the dumb furry animals? And Eggman responds with, because I'm the Eggman and you're a peasant. Now, get them. <laughs> The Eggman Empire does not recognize your copyrights. No, the Eggman Empire does not rec recognize the uh, coalition of ordered governments as an actual government, just a wayward 
military machine that must be conformed to the Eggman Empire standards. Correct. Sick tech, though. <laughs> hey, man, you gotta have them chainsaw <laughs> guns. <laughs> Shadow actually steals the chainsaw guns. He's like, that's mine now. As he should. And Marcus is like, like how, like how it is. <laughs> so there's like a running gag where Marcus attempts to try and bop Shadow, and Shadow just teleports away, like at the last second. He's like, I will, I will get my hands on you, you little black and red thing. Yeah, poor old um, poor old Marcus is like a fish out of water. Cole's like, ah, animal people. Hey, people are people. And and Marcus's girlfriend Anya's like, I don't know sure about these little animal. <gasps> Tiny animal people, <laughs> and they're so cute. And Marcus is like, "No, don't touch the weird animal." Uh, look, Marcus, tiny walrus. Okay, that's very cute, but oh uh, no, she's assimilated. Oh, uh, bad. At least they still have. Oh no, he's uh, building robots for the animal people. Oh, oh, oh. I hate this. I hate this. <laughs> <laughs> I hate this. And Sonic's like, "Hey, can I interest you in a friend?" No. No, I don't want your friends keep... It's like, this is Ray! And Ray's like, hi, I'm Ray, I hate myself! And Marcus is like, great friend you got there, Blue. <laughs> <laughs> no. Like, here, have Ray. You have to have him because it's the title of the product now. You have to take him. He's yours. I imagine I'll make use those chainsaw guns and scoffs and produce something much larger and louder. Yeah, and Bad's like, I want that. <laughs> we need sixteen of we need sixteen Omega stat. I'm gonna need to get the blueprints for this guy right now. Bad finds out about the E series robots is like I need the blueprints for all of these right now. Um type of chow Marcus Phoenix would raise would probably be a grumpy little thing that looks kinda like him. That's got the little bandana, the little scar, and sort of sits there, doesn't do much. Loves gardening, but as soon as you try and screw with its crop, it will go bananas and it will attack you with the fer ferocity of which you've never seen. Like those little sharp teeth, they're coming out <laughs> right for your no. jugular. I'm Vicious imagining the chow with that jawline. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Vicious little thing. Yep, yep. <laughs> Absolutely vicious. Coming to you soon, chow. War. Chow of War. <laughs> Not to be confused with God of War. That's that's a different Chow yeah. of War. Chow's of War. There you go. <laughs> it's the uh, it's the sequel to Chow in Space. There we go. They land on an alien planet full of hostile creatures, and then they have to fight to survive. Yeah, there you go. That works. <laughs> I like it. Yeah. So as we come up here on the end here, is there anything that you want to promote? Anything you want to? Yes, here? I'm. I'm just gonna show my Kofi. I have a Kofi, yeah. um, at Mighty Ray. So if you have loose change, any loose change, I, I'm not fussy. I like coins. So if you have any and you wish to uh, surrender them to me because you enjoyed this little ditty of a show, please do so. That would be very generous and loving of you, and I will give you my wholehearted thanks because you're cool. Awesome. And uh, Yeah. And be sure to go check out... Uh... Ollie's art too. We'll have the we'll have the uh, bumble slugs linked below. So go check those out. Yeah, yeah. So thank you again for sponsoring the show. Thank you again for joining us. Always a You're treat most to welcome. Just hang out and just be ridiculous for a bit. <laughs> Hopefully, in the future, I can give you more money. We can hang well, out. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure you can if you support her over at Kofi.com/slash Mighty Ray. Do it going to wrap us up for this edition of the Bumblecast. Thank you so much for joining us, and we will see you next time. Be good to yourselves. Be good to each other. Bye. Bye. Dang it, Discord. You cut out. You cut out, Molly. Never mind. It's okay. <laughs> it's weird. I heard her on my end. Yeah, she cut out for me. So Maybe the recording got it. Nope. Because what I hear is what the recording is. Well, Sadly. fine. Dash my hopes and dreams. Sadly. Gotcha. Unfortunately. Sorry. <laughs> You've been listening to The Bumblecast, a co-production of Bumble King Comics and the KNGI Network. 
Original theme music composed by Ken Coda Snyder. Remixed intro by T Lopes. Find out more information, along with podcast feeder links, MP3 downloads, and more at bumbleking.com and kngi.org. I try my best to make sure you're both like, this is fine. <laughs> it's a, don't want to be awkward or weird. Just want to make sure that you're all having a good time. Well, I mean, honestly, you've heard the show. We're awkward and weird on our own. <laughs> <laughs> Pretty much. <laughs> oh, man. Always, always fun, though.